Cool. Cool. <laughs> Easy. Thanks for doing this with us. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, essentially, we're going to talk about how you came from Melbourne, mm-hmm. Australia, to the United States. Nice and job on the pronunciation. Thank Sorry. you. <laughs> and I was telling her earlier in the car, she was like, no, it's Melbourne. I'm, like, yeah. I'm telling you. Nailed it. It's Melbourne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lazy Australian. Everything is lazily pronounced. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, tell me uh, about growing up in Australia. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was born in Melbourne, Australia, mm-hmm. and... It was great. I, you know, lived there my whole life, basically up until the past four, five years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, it was great. Melbourne's a really great place. It has a really great art scene and it's like a mixture of like everywhere. So you have a little bit of all different cultures Uh and it's kind of, I guess, like almost like the New York of Australia. Oh, is that right? Yeah. The city like is just very vibrant and like has, you know, a lot of great restaurants and venues and stuff and it just has a really cool energy to it does it have a pretty big music scene there yeah it does there's definitely where i grew up uh it was a little bit more of like a kind of pub you know oh okay stick playing that's where i kind of started wow that type of thing, playing okay solo and then on the north side there's like a lot of venues and it's just a real mixture there's a lot of like aussie hip-hop and mm-hmm. indie kind of punk bands and stuff yeah and yeah yeah it's a real melting pot that's cool um so how did you start getting into music then? Was it? Yeah. Well, n- uh, neither of my parents are musicians, but they're just huge music lovers. Oh, okay. Um, so my dad, uh, his vinyl collection was like what got me into music. So really? Like what kind of stuff did he have? It was like, uh, you know, the first thing was like the Beatles. That was sure. like when I heard the Beatles, that was what made me want to play guitar and write songs and sing and stuff. And yeah, his collection was, you know, a lot of like Chuck Berry and... John Lee Hooker and then the Stones and cool. Zeppelin and Joni Mitchell and Bob Dylan and just all this stuff that still is like the stuff that I love the mm-hmm. most. Right, yeah. yeah. Really had a really huge influence on me and still does. Mm-hmm. So y- you that's how you kind of got into music originally and then how did you pick up playing guitar? What age were you when yeah. you started really getting into playing? Yeah, I was like 12 when I, I heard uh, Back in the USSR by the Beatles. <laughs> and oh, like really? That was like, I'd never really thought about guitar or music before and in that moment i was like i want to play guitar so i begged my parents for like a month to get me a guitar oh. finally they gave me and got me a guitar and everything from that moment on was just all just obsessed with guitar <laughs> oh wow and yeah i, I kind of took to it real quickly and just loved playing it and and my like late teens i started to get also into like songwriting more and mm-hmm. singing and stuff so i think kind of around like 17 18 was when really I started to like take music seriously and and just knew that, you know, the only thing I wanted to do was going to be music. Okay. Yeah. That was kind of like the turning point. Yeah, I think so. Because like, yeah, I think it, it, it always was a huge part of my life. But really around those years, like that's when you finish school. Yeah. And everyone's on you about what you're going to do <laughs> and stuff. But <laughs> I, everything else at school fell by the wayside. As yeah. As I like... Found the guitar. Music. Yeah. It was like the only thing that... <laughs> I was good at and that like, you know, made me feel like I had an identity was music and it just kind of took off from that. Wow. And so when did you start playing your first shows in Melbourne? Yeah, it was probably around that time. I think kind of it was at school I would do like, you know, they'd have like like talent, talent show, show stuff. Yeah, oh, stuff. wow. So I do a little bit of that. But really gigging stuff was like after school finish. So around 18, mm-hmm. there was just a pub that was like the local pub that we would go to when we were like underage. <laughs> oh, okay. Get a yeah. Beer or whatever. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the guy there was just really nice. And he was like, you know, you should come in and play in here and uh-huh. give you a little bit of money and, you know, get your feet wet and stuff. So I did that. And that was really great because you would have to do really long, like two, three hour sets. Wow. Yeah. And you'd have to learn all these songs. And was that a lot of that cover song? Yeah, a lot of it. So, you know, it would be like Beatles stuff and Bob Dylan stuff. And, and I think that really helped me the most with songwriting was because you would learn all these songs and you would, you know, have to learn about how the verse connects to the chorus mm-hmm. and how this all happens. So then I would start to write my own stuff and I'd sneak it in. And it was <laughs> cool when people would think that that was just like, you know. Another cover. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And I think that was really good for like, just kind of building my confidence mm-hmm. and just sure. like, especially just acoustic guitar and, you know, singing. It was like there was no one else to play with. So you have to just kind of do it all one man band style. And it was good. It was just like, you know, straight into it. So, yeah. So you didn't s- 
in high school and stuff, you didn't play in bands with other no. people. It was just yeah. your own solo thing. I always thing. tried. I just, uh, no one was like into playing guitar at that stage was like the least cool thing you could do. Really? So it was <laughs> like, yeah, I think it was like, because that was probably also, I was at the time when like technology was starting to happen a little bit. So everyone was very interested in like DJ. Oh, and mm-hmm. like electronic music. Yeah, music that and type stuff. of stuff. But guitar, like, I didn't know. My best friend is a classical violinist and that's the only other musician. Oh, wow. She I loves yeah. violin. And yes. I love it too, but it's, and that's the closest I had to someone I could talk about <laughs> practice stuff on yeah. music, but it's still like a world away. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'd always try and get a band together, but it would either be, you know, people weren't as into it so they wouldn't turn up to rehearsal and whatever. So right. I just kind of, I got sick of it. So I just decided I had to do it myself. But my dream of dreams would have been to have been like, you know, in a band with like four people where you all share the, load yeah. And right yeah because yeah, you're kind of you've got the weight of it all on you yeah it's which has its pros and cons as well yeah. like i have friends now that are in bands that say you know it's we can't make a decision because it's like four people and right yeah but it all has you know it's like ups and downs and sure yeah did you teach yourself all those covers um yeah like very early on i had a guitar teacher right when i started and um then i kind of did a couple of years where i was really good at like like again with technology, YouTube mm-hmm. was like coming about mm-hmm. and I was really good at like watching like where the hands Oh, were. other guitar players yeah. play. And okay. that was kind of how I learnt to play a lot because I can't read music and I, I couldn't even really read tab or anything. Wow. <laughs> I was just like by listening and watching and then kind of in my like 16, 17 around there, I got a guitar teacher again and that was great because I would, you know, he would do things that I wouldn't normally play. So like mm-hmm. a little bit of jazzy stuff or you know, samba stuff or whatever. So you would take little bits and pieces of me like doing my butcher version <laughs> of it. But it's all stuff that was good because it takes you out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A lot of it was really just from like listening and yeah, that was the main way. I and think. watching the people on yeah. YouTube and stuff. Yeah, that was a great help. Like I still, if I need to learn something or see how something's played, I'm just super visual. So YouTube is like the greatest thing. I ever. know. Yeah. Is that how you learned to sing too? S- yeah, sing a lot like that. And then... It was just kind of like, again, it was like no one, when I did find people that would want to play, no one wanted to sing. So that was the other thing. <laughs> oh, no one right. wanted to sing. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I'll just do it because no one else wants to do it. And I'm really glad I did because now like I, I take singing as seriously as like my guitar playing, yeah. songwriting. And I think it's really great to be able to, you know, if you play an instrument, to be able to sing is like a really great thing because mm-hmm. it's like the most pure, you know, thing you can do is like your own voice and... And I have like a love-hate relationship with my voice, but I've learned <laughs> what my strengths are and like, yeah. you know, what works for me. And, and yeah, I think it's like, I'm really glad that I did that. That's great. Yeah. So when you were learning the songs, that's kind of how you learn to sing as well. is just from picking up covers and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. And that was really good for, you know, you learn about, like it's a little bit technical, but you learn about, you know, what keys work for your voice. So maybe if right. you listen to you know, a Paul McCartney song, maybe he sings it in G, but it works better for you down in F. Oh. So all that type of stuff. Like music theory. Yeah, it was really good to kind of learn like where the sweet spots for your voice is. And and yeah, basically like those three things, like writing, playing and singing, mm-hmm. I just wanted to work equally, you know, as hard at all three of them. Yeah. So I could, you know, the main goal was to be like a singer, songwriter, guitarist, not just a guitarist or yeah. just a songwriter. And, and I think it helps as well now, like writing your own music, you kind of write for your voice. Uh huh. So yeah. it's kind of the stuff that like no one else would probably sing because it's like, yeah, it, it's, you cater to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, when did you, so when you started writing these songs and playing, you were just out of high school, you said? Yeah. I, I would always try and write before then, but it was never any good. Like anything you do, it's never good for like the first couple <laughs> of right. years. So you were, you were really just working on your craft. And then when you started playing at this pub, yeah. that's when you started writing more seriously? Yeah. I got really around that age, like 17, 18, I got really into like a lot of, you know, what would be like the classic singer songwriters like Bob Dylan and Neil Young. Right. Joni Mitchell and Jeff Buckley. So that was when I really, you know, I was, it wasn't satisfying to me to play other people's songs exclusively anymore. I wanted to write my own music. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it was like around 18 or 17 or 18. I wrote a song called Winter that was on my first EP. Yeah. And that was the first time I kind of wrote something that really, I was really proud of. And that for me was like a big confidence boost. And a lot of people 
that I knew really liked that song and it got uh-huh. a really good reaction. So since that song, it's kind of that kind of sent me on my way. Wow. Yeah. So th- was the did that all happen when you're still in Australia when you, when you put that first EP out? Yeah. And when you release that EP, was that under a label or management or publishing? Like, how did that work? Yeah. No, or it was, was all indie. Yeah. And I'm still, I'm independent. Still? And yeah. Oh, yeah okay. And everything is very like, you know, a little team and we do everything ourselves. And it's just like, yeah, it's kind of the way now in the mm-hmm. world is like, you can be an indie artist and, mm-hmm. in, and make waves and, you know, little by little build and get a following and stuff like that. But yeah, originally the first EP was like, uh, through a friend, I got introduced to a producer out there who was actually American, but living in Australia. In Australia. Okay. And, uh, he heard some of my stuff online and really liked it and was very encouraging. So I went out and did like, it was like four songs, I think with him. And that was another, like, that was my first time being in like a studio Uh being around like actual proper musicians and you just kind of learn so much by just being like a sponge. Yeah, was that kind of intimidating? Yeah, very much so. It was probably, I was really young. So when you're young, you're really cocky. (laughs) (laughs) But now I think it, it definitely was. And I still to this day, like there's just things about playing with other musicians and working in a studio now that I draw directly from those first experiences. Wow. Yeah, it'll just probably be with me for my whole life, hopefully. Okay. When he heard your stuff, was that like on YouTube or? Yeah, it was on, there was a, there was this radio station in Australia called Triple J and they have a page called Triple J Unearthed, which is like, if you're an unsigned artist, you can put your music on it. Oh, wow. And they have like a little chart and people can find it and it did well on the little chart. So he found it through that, I think. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah, that was a really, that was just like a, you know, straight out of school doing that stuff. It was just a really encouraging thing for me. When did you make the decision to move to the United States? Yeah, it was it was 2014. And um, originally I was just coming over to L.A. to do like a showcase they had out there. And then it was like a little tour um, for like a month or, you know, three weeks or whatever with some other Australian bands. And it in, was around. In, in the States? Yeah, it was like. How a, did that, how did you set that all up? That was through like, um, that was through a company who basically was like a radio company out in LA who okay. they were bringing over like Australian artists <laughs> to like wow. do stuff. Yeah, it was really cool. And Did uh, they contact you? Or? Yeah, it was through like, it was through management at the time, which was different management, but it was through them. Um, and it was great. There were some other really good Australian bands on it. And I just came over, didn't know, you know, what it would be like, but I was super excited because I, I always loved American music. Had you ever been to... I'd been York? to America once um, just after school finished for like just mainly vacation. I did like a little course, like a music course in LA oh, for like okay. two weeks. Cool. Um, but it was great. But, you know, I was like 18, so mm. you, know, you can't really go out. Go out and, and do... Sp- yeah, yeah, right. Of course. <laughs> so by the time I came back, I was of age and it was Over great. 21. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it was great. That was like a great touring experience. And, and then kind of uh, more and more things were just happening in America. And mm-hmm. it was like, I think because it was music based in like the blues and rock. Yeah. There's still a really big scene of that here. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was like, you know, I met my manager and I got a booking agent and things just started to happen that it was like, it just made sense to be here. Just Yeah. So after you came here for that tour, did you just stay at that point? Yeah. I went back briefly after. And then when I was back home, I got, I found out that I got the BB King tour. So wow. it was like I came back after that. And then very much since then, it's been like just working away and little by little. And yeah, it was great. Like that first year, 2014 was like, I got the BB King tour and I also got to meet Gary Clark Jr. Who oh like my gosh. I just yeah, toured you just with. Toured yeah, with. so it's a funny like kind of full circle-y thing. And it was just like, you know, there was like no going back home after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Those things like you could dream about for a thousand years in mm-hmm. Australia, but it's just like, you know, it's like being out here, you actually can, you know, play at a place and someone like Gary comes out and sees you or, you know, it's just those crazy, I've been real lucky to have a lot of really amazing experiences happen whilst being out here. Yeah. Um, tell me about the BB King tour. Cause I wanted, I really wanted to talk to you about that. So walk me through getting told that you're going to be playing with BB King. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'd met my manager, Kristen just before that. So we'd started working together and she'd brought in a booking agent and, um, they, they would send out sheets that, you know, it has like all people that you could pitch to open up for. Oh, wow. And, like, uh, I, I didn't know, but BB King was one of them. So they pitched for it and they didn't tell me obviously, cause they probably thought it would 
make my head blow up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I got it. And I think the... <laughs> You know, I think the thing was that him and his, like, uh, the crew around him were just really... I think they always had a history of being encouraging of younger people who wanted to play blues music and be part of it. Yeah. So I don't know how exactly it happened, but I assume that must have been part of it. So, yeah, they she called me up and she was like, you know, you're going to get to BB King. And it was just like... Yeah, it was just crazy. Like, I remember the first time I came to America... Uh, me and my parents bought like last minute tickets to go out to see him play because, you know, he was so old that I thought I'd, <laughs> yeah. I have to see him before, <laughs> like, you know, he's gone. <laughs> and so then it was just crazy. <laughs> then a couple of <laughs> years later, it was like getting the chance to do that. And it was great. It was bittersweet because it was meant to be like seven shows uh-huh. and it ended up being like two because he got sick, sick on the tour. Yeah. But like still the experience of having been able to do those two shows is, you know, outweighs any of the lows that I had about it. So it's just... You're the last guy to ever open up for him. Yeah, which was a really like strange thing. And it was just, yeah, it was like the last show that he played was at the Chicago um, House of Blues. Uh So just being there in general was pretty crazy. And yeah, it was just like for that first year and being in America, it was just a real amazing experience to have and yeah. yeah when you did the bb king tour or the those two dates did you have your full length record out yet no i had um the second ep i did uh-huh. had just come out around that time and was that recorded that was recorded in la in yeah. la um okay. just kind of a couple months before that tour started mm-hmm. um yeah so i had the two eps out at the time hadn't done like a full length or anything and yeah it's just the you know, the EP thing was really great for like you just kind of throw stuff at the wall yeah. and mm-hmm. see what will stick because you don't have to really commit necessarily to any one thing and you just, it's like a calling card basically just trying all these things. And yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny now to think about that in comparison to doing an album is like very different. And then a lot of it was like I really took my time with the, the first album mm-hmm. and um, even the recording of it was like, we would record in little chunks and so maybe do like four songs, you know, in a couple a week or whatever, then mm-hmm. take a couple months off, then go back and do another four songs and take a couple months off. So it was like very spread out, which was great because I wrote a lot and then I would just kind of uh, give it to the producer and he would tell me what's good and what's not. And yeah. we would kind of, yeah. So you could like, at least you had that time to sit on it and listen to it and yeah. like kind of like marinate and figure out what you want to do with it. Yeah. And I think every time I've, I've gotten to do like an EP or an album or whatever, it's always been very different. Like the new album I just did was like, I didn't force it, but I kind of wrote all those songs in one period of time. Like it was oh, just wow. like, I was just knocking them out and really inspired. Uh-huh. So that's the really interesting thing about writing. I think and working on a album is like it's always different especially writing for me mm-hmm. it's like sometimes it'll be a lyric and other times it'll be a chord progression or some songs take like two years to write <laughs> some songs take, take two minutes so mm-hmm. it's just like it's uh, exciting because it's always different after the what after the bb king tour did what was the next step for you there after the the first album came out did you do another tour because i know you just said you just got off tour with gary clark jr yeah was there were you i think around maybe then like that was kind of towards the end of that year 2014 so Mm -hmm. i think maybe the start of 2015 um i got real lucky to open up for los lobos who's a really oh yeah i was actually here which was the first time i'd ever come out here i got to open up for them at the belly up and Mm -hmm. and that was really great and i got along real well with steve berlin who's the sax player and he actually ended up playing on a song on my first album so that was like another one of those like all these people like bb king los lobos and gary are have been my heroes for so long that it's like, yeah, it's you've just, got to work with all of yeah, them. Yeah, it's just really amazing to be able to open up for them or whatever. So that that was pretty soon after that, and then it was like a lot of playing around LA, really, like kind of yeah, starting to do the whole actually becoming part of like the LA music scene, <laughs> playing at like you know Hotel Cafe and mm-hmm. the Troubadour and all those places that. The my favorite thing about LA is like the music scene and mm-hmm. and people are very like accepting and. And it's really cool to just kind of be welcomed into that being from somewhere else. And so there was a lot of that. It was just like a lot of road dogging, like just like trying to play anywhere I could. And sometimes you play to really small audiences and sometimes you play to big audiences. And it's just, it was just like go out and, you know, learn how to play and connect with people and play with a band and lead a band and all this stuff. It was like, 
that was a real growing period, I think. Yeah. And have you had the same members playing with you, like players when you tour for a while now? Yeah, or? it swapped a little bit in those days, but now like the drummer, Curran, um, me and him have been playing together now for, I guess, coming up to like two years. Oh, wow. And um, Lauren, the bass player, she came in around this time last year. So okay. it's been kind of this, the three of us for, you know, a little bit now. And it's really great because it's like, it's just a real great fit. And it's nice to have it be like one band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like the thing, like not, you know, which is, there's nothing wrong with it, but being a solo person, you know, it can be a rotating cast. Of right, 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 right. But I really enjoyed <laughs> being part of a band and feeling that like bond and, yeah. and being able to like, you know, have the music kind of grow and change instead of having to like constantly rebuild. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So when you go to the st when you go to the studio like for this for this recent record, are you playing all the parts? No, I wish oh, I could. Okay. I wish I was that talented. That oh, I, I was sure. Yeah, yeah. Some people do. That Gary is mm -hmm. someone who does that, and uh -huh. I, it blows my mind that people can do that. But um, I'm kind of good at my one little thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good at like anything to do with guitars and singing and, and vocals. Stuff. I can do that. Yeah. But um, the band I used on the new record. I had played with all of them before okay. and they'd all played on the Trouble album. And, you know, this time Trouble was like that. It was a rotating cast of different people on different songs. This time I knew I wanted it to be one band for the whole for thing. For the whole album? Yeah. Okay. And basically, so we could almost kind of go deeper on the songs because it like, you know, sometimes you go to a session, you meet people that day, half an hour later, you've done like a song. So <laughs> And then they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> so it was nice to be able to like, n you know, be friends with all the people and have a connection, have played and really dig deep into the material. So like the drummer was this guy, Johnny Radalat, who he plays in Gary's band. And that's oh, kind of wow. how I know a lot of them and stuff. Okay. Um, and the bassist, Chris Bruce plays with a whole bunch of great people and Jerry Bourget is the keyboarder. So he played with me. Oh, he, um, for quite a while. Is it, was he in the Foo Fighters or uh, no? That's a there's another guy, Rami Jaffe. Oh, They're okay. kind of like the two organ dudes. Yeah. Around town, okay. Yeah. So it was like that band, and it, it was great because those guys, to me as well, they're all guys from bands. So they're not kind of like the slick session musician. They're all like at the heart of it, like band guys and yeah, very feel based. And they weren't studio like trained no, studio musicians. Yeah. So we just kind of it's like you know a garage band. We all kind of get together <laughs> yeah. and we all play live together at the same time and. Yeah, it's really like about feel more than like technique or anything. With the Gary Clark Jr. tour, do you, did he request you to open up for him? How did that work? Yeah, well, in that year, 2014, that I came over, um, I was playing in New York for like one of the first times I played there. And um, Kristen knew Gary. And me and Kristen weren't working together at that time, but she knew Gary. And um, the night before the gig, I guess she ran into him and she was like, you should come out to the show if you want to, you know, check out this kid, uh -huh. guitar player, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know. So I was <laughs> like playing the set and like, you know, it was one of my early, early days of gigs. So there weren't many people there. Yeah. And one of the first people I saw was like Gary. Oh, so man. I was like, oh, man, precious <laughs> on. And was that nerve wracking? It was. I remember like my hand like <laughs> tensing up and just being like, I got to keep it together. And the gig actually went real good. And um yeah, afterwards we just got to hang out and he was really complimentary and cool and it was just really nice to like, you know, get to shoot the shit with someone who yeah. like you really admire and is just a really cool person and and so we kind of like stayed in touch after that and would cross paths at different like, you know, a festival or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always hoped I'd get to open for him, but you yeah. just kinda, you know, wait and see where things go. And then yeah, in like January I was back home over the Christmas break of uh, this year <laughs> and uh yeah again found out i was gonna be opening for him and and it was also great that it was like i was gonna be opening for him in australia yeah so it was like yeah. The, yeah and it was like i hadn't i hadn't been doing stuff in australia a lot because i've been out here yeah. spending most of my time and effort and stuff um so it was really great to be able to, it was like a cherry on top to be opening up for him being able to do it in australia and you know play at home where people can come yeah see me and friends and stuff and family and it was just like the perfect tour. Like it just, it couldn't have gone better. And yeah, I got to like sit in with him every night on his encore, which was just crazy. And it was just, it was great. It was, wow. Yeah, it was really awesome. Did you play a show in, in Melbourne then? Yeah, we did. Which also at like a venue uh, called The Forum in Melbourne. That's like an iconic 
like right in the heart of the city and you know i'd gone to a bunch of concerts there growing up and always like being like one day like I, you know <laughs> so that was really that was definitely like a highlight of the tour for me being able to play at home i can imagine have all friends and family and everyone come out it was just yeah it was like a really special thing i can imagine yeah playing a venue that you would go to as a kid yeah. seeing bands play there and then now you're opening up for like one of your favorite artists yeah <laughs> it was really really like crazy i'm still i think i'm still uh coming down <laughs> like the post tour high yeah. yeah it was great and I'd when did you play bottle rock um that was last year that was like Almost probably this time last year, and that was one of my favorite gigs ever. Really? Just, yeah. Why was, is that? It's such a great festival. Like it's like uh, the lineup is amazing, mm -hmm. and yeah. I like that it's super diverse. So it's yeah. not just sometimes you know you get on a thing that can be really like I don't, but it could be a hip hop, <laughs> yeah, <heavy laughs> yeah, right, or right. like a rock heavy festival, mm -hmm. whatever. It's really cool when it's like everything. Yeah, they back. do a very good job yeah. of booking um, very diverse yeah. talent. There's something for everyone. And mm -hmm. like, you know, even the backstage area is like you're all together as well. So like Snoop Dogg's there. Oh, and wow. There's like, you know, um, Billy Idol and the killer. <laughs> and everyone's just in this one thing. And it was great. Everyone there was just like really awesome. The crowd was great. And... Even like, you know, like the backstage catering was like amazing. Like it was just like it was <laughs> yeah. like being in Napa in that beautiful yeah. mm -hmm. area. And yeah, that's just a festival that they have like everything down to a T. And it's just, it's like so great because not every festival or gig or, you know, can be like that. So right. Yeah, <laughs> of course. It's a real like fresh of fresh air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there any uh, country you haven't played that yet that you are going to be playing soon or um, you hope to be playing soon? I think most of the stuff we're doing at the moment is the same. I'd love one day to go to like Japan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you haven't played there. Japan. Yet. Yeah, I've, I haven't played there and I have friends that play there and they say it's just crazy. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've, yeah I've, everyone I've talked to that's played there says it's like one of their favorite places yeah. to go. And they love like guitar, like they love rock and roll and uh -huh. blues and like people go there and they say that, that it's like you're the Beatles. Like yes. they just go crazy. <laughs> like so, I, And I love Japanese culture and mm -hmm. Japanese food and everything. So mm -hmm. I'd love to play there. Um and then even like, you know, like Spain. Oh, like that the would same be cool. Type of thing. Yeah. All those type of like, because we did Europe for the first time last year. And it's the same thing. They're just guitar nuts. Like they just <laughs> love blues and roots music and electric guitar. And they just go crazy. Like the festival stuff. I've never seen so many like drunk, <laughs> just totally into it. Like I'm yeah. from Australia. Yeah. And that's like <laughs> yeah. as well. And it's like... <laughs> It's just wild. Like, it's, yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's awesome. So those crowds are definitely different than the U.S. crowds we've heard, right? Yeah. <laughs> the US, I mean, the U.S. has the thing as well. Here it gets pretty rowdy. We did ah. a, uh, a gig opening for Los Lobos on New Year's a couple of years back, and that was just crazy. <laughs> Here at the Belly Up? Yeah. At, you released a live record from the Belly yeah, Up, Yeah, that right? was from, I think that was from that night. And it was funny because, like, we had, I guess someone was filming it, um, and the sound they got from the camera was, like, really good. <laughs> And really? so I got the sound from the board and I wasn't like crazy about it because that can be hard to do sometimes. Things yeah, are, mixing it live yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But for some reason, this guy's camera <laughs> picked up like this <laughs> incredible sound. So I was like, we should use that. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we use. We, you know, fixed a couple things, but not much. So it's pretty like raw and like wow. uh, as it was. But it's cool. It's like a yeah. time shot. You it know. sounds good. We listened to yeah, it. Yeah, we were yeah. listening to it. I haven't it. listened to it in a while. Probably... I'm probably scared too. But no, we were <laughs> listening yeah. to it today and, yeah. and Tara's like, yeah, this is live at the belly of I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> yeah, I think it was that. It must have been that New Year's. Though, yeah, so. To know that's off somebody's camera, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was like lucky that it happened as well, that it was just like, yeah, it was it was something weird like that, that uh, it was just like sounded really good. And Do you remember, like, how did you find the person that was filming? Or was it somebody in your... I think he sent it. I think oh. he sent it to us. And it was like, wow, the like the audio is really good on this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just kind of came in handy but yeah it's it's cool i love live stuff because it's like you know it's that time and that yeah. exact performance and uh -huh. things go wrong but things happen that are like these beautiful little accidents and stuff and Ye it's just like it's it's cool yeah sounds like there was good energy that night <laughs> there was there was a lot of margaritas yeah <laughs> i think everyone was having a good time <laughs> that's amazing what uh, advice do you have for aspiring artists yeah i think um as cheesy as it is, I think it like just getting out there and doing it uh -huh. and like doing as much as you can, like just playing 
any gig, whether it's five people or 500 people. And, and I think, um, I think especially as an independent artist, having confidence in yourself um, and the music that you make and making mm -hmm. the music that you actually want to make because it can be really hard to, you know, you don't have the same, uh, obviously like a huge machine behind you mm -hmm. and all these things. So it can be hard sometimes to know where it's all going. But I think like keeping the faith and, you know, you do start to see like little by little things happen. You get better gigs, you get, you know, radio play or whatever. And it's just, I think it's really just about sticking with it. And the longer you stick with it and keep at it, the more you get out of it. Because like there's been so many times where, you know, I'm like, I'm just going to give it all in like, yeah. for a second. But it never happens. Yeah. It's, never <laughs> like, you know, it's always fleeting and it's like. I just keep coming back to it and every year it gets a little better. So I think it's just like at the determination to if you really want to do music, you just do it. Yeah. Bring me the best